Hiya, would you like to watch some Badger basketball? Well, we're not going to watch Badger basketball in this in this video. However, that is what I've been doing lately. It's kind of getting into basketball season, I guess, depending on when you're watching this video. But, with that being said, we are going to um, start a new chapter. Uh, this new chapter, this new unit is all about congruent figures, specifically triangles. So our first section, section 4.1, um, is going to focus around this goal, that this, this learning target that's right here. Um, and it is, I can recognize congruent figures and their corresponding parts. All right? So um, let's really focus on that goal and let's go to the next slide. Right here. So what are congruent figures? That's the first question. What are they? Uh, you might be able to figure it out just based on prior knowledge, the difference between congruent and similar, but congruent figures are exactly the same size and shape. Okay, so two figures that have the, or multiple figures that have the same size and shape. Similar figures um, have the same shape, but different size. So if you think about it, um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you a visual example with a little heart. So if I were to clone that thing, they are going to be congruent. And I'll even use a little congruent symbols here. Those two things are congruent because they're exactly the same size, exactly the same shape. Now I could take this and I could, um, whoops, I could clone it again. Sorry, I'm all over the place here. I could clone it again, and or I could delete it. I guess. Here we go. Clone it again, um, and then I could. Let's see. Take this. Now I have two hearts again. They look the same because they're the same. I mean, they're the same color. But they're the exact same shape. They are just a different size. That's a similar figure. Um, we're going to work on most on, on congruent figures in this chapter, proving things that are con exactly congruent. So it's important that you know these two terms. So um, some key concepts here. One at the top here. When two different figures uh, are congruent, you can slide, flip. Or turn, it says turn, one so that it fits exactly um, on the other. So if, if you have, so here's a good example. We have our box here, our, our, our square. If you turn it, if you had these two and someone said, well, those aren't congruent, they're not the same shape. One looks like a diamond, one looks like a square. But if you can rotate it so that it fits exactly on top of it, then they are congruent. So if I go like this, this fits exactly on top of it. They are congruent. So don't be fooled by the, the, the orientation of it. You have to look for that just the corresponding parts. So here's where this comes in. Our key concept. All right. Congruent polygons have congruent corresponding parts. They're matching sides and angles. And that's important. If they have... If you can find all the sides to match up with all the sides of another one to be congruent, and all the angles to match up, then these two con the, the two polygons are congruent. So when you name po congruent polygons, you must list corresponding parts uh, or vertices in the same order. That's important. For them to be congruent, you have to list them in the same in the right order. So here, let's 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 get an example of that here. Um, if we're given that. Polygon A, B, C, D is congruent to polygon Q, R, S, T. We want to look at the corresponding parts. So let's just say we have these two squares. Okay. If it's these two squares, and this is A, B, C, D, it has to be in the same exact order. Now squares, all the sides and all the angles are the same, so that's a, a bad example. But if you look at the other one, it has to be matched up. This one has to be um, Q, R, S, T. Especially when you have um, shapes that, like a triangle, maybe not even an equilateral triangle, um, any sort of right triangle or isosceles triangle, you have to have the correct vertices uh, matched up when you're saying they're congruent so that we know that which, which matches up, which uh, corresponding parts match up. So an example, 
this would show that angle A would correspond to angle Q, meaning those two are congruent here. Angle B and R would be congruent to each other, C and S, and then D and T. Um, you can also look at it like this. Um, for sides, then side B, C has to be congruent to side R, S. Um, if you said side D, A, that would have to be congruent to D, A would have to be T, Q. Okay? So the sides, the, the actual orientation of, of how it's listed matters for congruence. It, it is really important. Let's do a couple examples here. Here's the first one. Uh, polygon MNOP is congruent to QRST. Identify all the parts of congruent sides and angles. Now, if you look at this, it might be hard because they're not oriented the right way or the same way. You have to rotate one to figure it out. But you don't even need this picture if you don't want because you can look at what we have here. So we could say that angle M we know is going to be congruent to angle Q because that's the first one in both of them. So that's why they're congruent. Uh, angle N is congruent to angle R. Um, angle O is congruent to angle S. And then angle P is congruent to angle T. Those are all the angles. You can just look at what's given there and without even looking at the picture, let me just lock this in place here. Um, you can go ahead and you can figure out what is congruent to what. Let's do this. Same thing with the sides. So um, if we look at the sides, we'd have MN is going to be congruent to QR. We'd have NO. No is congruent to RS because they're in the same spot. We'd have OP is congruent to ST, side ST, and then side MP or PM. I'm going to do MP. Oh, I'm not sure what just happened there. All right, here we go. Um, Sorry, MP is congruent to QT. All right, corresponding parts. All right, so let's say we have this example. It says triangle FGH is congruent to triangle QRS. Find the measures of the given angles or the length of the given sides based on what we have. So if you look at number two, it says the measure of angle F and the measure of angle Q, those according to our thing are corresponding, meaning their angle measures would be the same. So you can set them equal to each other. X plus 24 must be equal to 3X. Now looking over on number 3, GH and RS, GH does match up with RS, so those would be the same too. So 3X minus 2 should be equal to X plus 6. And then you can just solve for X. Um, but it does say to find the measures of the given angles. So I'm going to solve for x. I'm going to have you do the same thing. Why don't you pause it um, and then plug that in to figure out the measures of the given angles or side lengths. All right, for number two, when I solved for x, I got 12. And then I plugged it back in for both of those. And you get um, the measure angle q and f are both equal to 36 degrees. And then for number three, I'm looking at um, solving for x there, I got four. And then the... Psi lengths, if you plug it back in for both of those, would be 10. All right. Let's go on to the theorem that we have for this section. Um, recall what the triangle angle sum theorem is. Basically, that is that all angles of a triangle equal to 180 degrees. All right. Now, we're going to use that here. And this is, if you look at theorem 401, it says... Uh, it's a third angles theorem. It says if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, like in the picture we have A is congruent to D and B is congruent to E, then the third angles are congruent. All right? If you think about it, if they all have to add up to 180, 
and the other two are congruent, that means whatever's left is going to be the same in both of these. So then, then we could say that angle C is congruent to angle F. All right? And that's going to come in handy. That's a, that's a useful theorem. Uh, so just remember, how do you determine whether two triangles are congruent? All corresponding sides and angles must be congruent. All right, so we can look at this example. We have one proof I want to do, but number th number two here says, can you conclude the figures are congruent? Let's let's see. Are these two triangles congruent? We have one angle congruent. These are congruent. These are right angles. These would be congruent because those are vertical angles. Um, I don't think we have enough information for anything else, actually. Unfortunately. So no for this one. Um, B, it's it's labeled this way. So remember these dashes mean that like if there's one dash in this one, one dash in this one, those sides are congruent. So two dashes mean those sides are congruent. Three dashes mean those sides are congruent. All sides are congruent. So that one works. Angles, we have one set of congruent angles, two sets of congruent angles. And looking at that third angles theorem, we have all angles congruent. So yes, we could we could con conclude that the these two triangles would be congruent for this one. So let's with that let's use this to solve our, do our last thing, um, this one theorem. So it says we are given that um, this is gonna be my first step that side AD and side BE bisect each other. We gotta remember what that means. And that A B side A B is congruent to side D E. And that's labeled on there for us already. And that angle A is congruent to angle D, and that's labeled here for us already too. Alright? That is all given to us here. We're trying to find that all parts are congruent. So, I'm going to look at the sides first. We have one set of sides congruent. But we know that these two sides bisect each other. So, based on the whatever bisecting means, um, that means that C would be the midpoint of those sides. So, if they're bisecting each other, then um, we're going to say that AC is congruent to CD and side BC is congruent to side CE. So if I were to label them, this one is congruent to this and this one is congruent to this one. That's just a definition of a bisector, of a, of a um, segment bisector. It means it's cutting things in half. It's the middle part of it, which is awesome. Now we have all three sides congruent. We just need to make sure we have uh, the last two angles congruent. See if we can do it. So number three here, I'm going to use a different color in here. We do know that this angle right here is congruent to this angle right here. So that would be angle ACB. Let me get the correct... Uh, it's going to be DCE. Those are congruent because they are vertical angles. The vertical angles theorem tells us that. That vertical angles are congruent. So we just need one more angle. And that one actually comes from our one theorem today. We can finally say that angle B is congruent to angle E because... to three, four would be because of our third angles theorem.
meaning if you have two angles inside of it congruent, then the third one is as well. And finally, we can say that triangle ACB is congruent to triangle DCE by the definition of congruence or of congruent uh, polygons. We'll say shapes. All right. This ended up being the fifth step, sorry. So five steps, not too bad for proving that those two angles are congruent. So I'm going to leave you with one closing question. Well, two of them kind of. But to think about and review, how many pairs of angles must be shown to be congruent when proving two triangles are congruent based on, A, the definition of congruent triangles, and then secondly, B, based on the third angle theorem, what would you say? All right. So answer those two questions and go back to this this theorem that was, or this goal, sorry, this is our learning target. I can recognize congruent figures and their con corresponding parts. So that wraps it up for this lesson. I hope you learned something good about uh, congruent figures as we go forward here um, on, a, on a whole chapter about congruent figures, particularly triangles. Have a great day.